guys welcome back to the channel this week i went to the architectural salvage place that's located actually just a few blocks from my house which i'm so lucky for it's four stories and filled with basically anything that would go in a house architectural salvage is kind of what it sounds like it's salvage so it tends to be not in as good a shape as what you'd find at a flea market or especially an antique shop or even really a thrift store most of the items are at least a little bit damaged when it comes to furniture or art or lighting anything really but you can get much better prices on it they also have a ton of stuff that most people just throw away old vent covers for vents like i'm lucky i have all the original vent covers in my house but if i needed to add a few more i could go there and try to match them they also have lots of old doors old windows you can see a few doors behind me old hinges doorknobs a lot of stuff that you would just throw away when you're demoing they salvage it specifically from older houses that building is packed to the brim their basement floor is just all doors just doors upon doors upon doors they have plumbing stuff they have old vintage sinks and they've got countertops mirrors the list is never ending i'll definitely be back it's one of my favorite places even to just walk around it's kind of rough right now because they don't have any heating and i live in upstate new york it is i think 24 degrees out right now and it's just about that cold inside the place as well so not as fun of an experience as when it's warmer. With all that being said, we're gonna go through what I got. When I go architectural salvage shopping, sometimes I like to just wander, but a lot of the times my most effective trips are when I'm looking for something specific. Because they have so much stuff, it's really easy to get overwhelmed and just end up wandering and not really knowing where to focus your attention. I went in knowing that I needed three doors. Because my house was split into two separate units and the unit that was directly above me here, which had the kitchen, the bedroom, and the bathroom that I now use, was considered a studio apartment. They took the door off both the kitchen and the bedroom. The kitchen is not that big of a deal because it's a kitchen. It doesn't really need to have a door, but the bedroom, I definitely want to have a door. And the kitchen is not staying a kitchen forever. Right now, that's what it is so that I can do this kitchen. But eventually, that's actually going to be a laundry room and I'm going to want to be able to put a door on it. So I knew I needed two doors for upstairs and I need a door for down here as well. Almost every single door in this house, if it's here, was original, I think. That's what it seemed like. They're all solid wood doors and at least the upstairs doors all kind of match each other and the downstairs doors all kind of match each other, semi. So I'm thinking they were all original to the house except for one door. This door is vinyl. It's plastic. It has like a modern doorknob. And I really hate around the trim of like this window. It's all like a yellowed plastic and it's specifically done in a yellow because all around it's white. I do not like it. I am not gonna like throw it out. I think I'm gonna donate it to the local Habitat for Humanity where I've been giving a lot of my stuff, but it doesn't feel like it fits with the house. I would hate to do all this beautiful work in the kitchen and then have this be the entry point that people see when they're coming in. So I knew I needed a door for down here. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. I'm gonna raise you up so you can. But while I was demoing these exterior walls, I discovered the door to this room was originally like maybe half a foot taller. So I actually got a door that's about the size of what the original door was, especially since the ceilings in here are being raised about a foot, foot and a half. Having the door be taller as well just feels like it fits the grand. So those were the doors that I needed to replace because not all the doors in this house do match each other exactly. I went more for the vibe of them and that is straight lines. There's a lot of straight lines in the doors and just in this house generally, there's not a whole lot of curves. The front door has a lot of straight lines, all of the doors down here, it's just, it's a lot of straight lines. And so I was thinking to match that feel rather than the exact look. I thought I would be a lot more successful doing that. So without further ado, my new doors. This door I think matches the look of the rest of the house the best because it has these kind of little pockets or what would you 
all these cutouts. It has these little cutouts. There's one, two, three, four, five cutouts, which is not exactly the same amount. The doors down here have six cutouts that are a little bit smaller. But again, I could not match exactly. I was going for the vibe. It has its hinges. Well, at least half of its hinges. I still need to get the hinges to attach to the door. So it's got a brass faceplate and a working locking mechanism. There's actually a few of mine in the house that are no longer, like they don't have the ability to click in anymore. So it's really nice to have that in this door and I don't have to worry about it. This door does not have the faceplate. You can see it originally had a circular one, which is not what any of my house has. So I'm not gonna be replacing it with what was originally on here. I'm going to be putting one that matches what I have on. This door also has the full hinges. So you can see it's got the hinge that will attach to the door and, or attach to the wall and the hinge that's attached to the door already, both on the top and bottom. I kind of like the height it gives it. I think my doors can feel a little bit squat because they have all those little sections going vertically. It's kind of the concept of like vertical versus horizontal stripes and clothing. And I just think it feels like it's got a little bit more height and grandeur to it. On to the last door. So <laughs> this door, oh my God, is in worse shape than the other two, but it kind of mimics the look that that other one had. It's got the long sections and it was also the most expensive. This door was $250. He tried to get me to pay $300 for it and I was able to haggle a bit. I kind of wish I'd even gone lower because it needs a lot of work. Because unlike the other doors, I'm actually planning on stripping this one. This will be the back door leading into the kitchen. I also have to put new glass in here. This is just like a plexi, like plastic piece that's in here. And you can see it's even broken on this side. Originally, I think it obviously did have glass in it and they kind of cheaped out on replacing it. I want to get glass cut to put in here. But yeah, so this will be the back door. It kind of has half the hinge again, like the other one where it's got the hinge attached to the door, but not the hinge that will attach to the wall. So I'll have to get that. It also does have that locking mechanism and the faceplate on both sides. I'm not actually gonna be using this faceplate, but I will be using this lock box and I'll just be adding a deadbolt above. I'm not gonna deal with like trying to get a key for this because it technically could lock. So I'm excited about the doors and I'm very grateful that these are the only doors I'm gonna need to get. I am so lucky to have a lot of the originals left in the house. And I'm so lucky that the only door that they replaced with a cheapy one is this back door. This will be a project for another day. I'm thinking that they'll be included in videos as I do each room. So you'll definitely be seeing this door done soon when I'm doing the kitchen, but I think the upstairs doors will wait until I conquer those makeovers. Next things that I got are lights. I hate, hate, hate the overhead lighting that I have on the first floor. In here, it's all the recessed lights and this like weird little pendant over the sink. In the living room and dining room, it's fans that have lights on them. And most of the rest of the rooms don't have overhead lighting, which I definitely wanna change. I like being able to just click on a light switch. So I went hunting for brass chandeliers. I really love beautiful light fixtures and I've never had any. My old apartments had either recessed lighting or my last place had fans with lights. It's one of the reasons I know I don't want that because I just don't like how it looks. So I am kind of going all out on beautiful lighting in this house. I got four chandeliers this time and I bought two previously, but I'm gonna also be using those lights. This is number one. I really like kind of the detail that some of this has. I do not like the hanging crystals. Those will all be coming off. I think it just makes it look too busy and also it's just gonna collect dust. They're just gonna look dusty. It's beautiful though. I also have already figured out which room all these are going in. This will not end up having as long of a chain as it has now. I'm gonna end up taking some of the links off. And you can see, yeah, the chain's pretty long. But I love this light. And honestly, the candlesticks on this are in pretty good shape. I might just clean them up. I'm debating whether I'm gonna need to rewire these chandeliers. I kind of wanna talk to my electrician about it. It's definitely possible because obviously they're wired now, but if I don't have to do it, I'm not going to. And that's actually gonna be the light that goes in the dining room. This is my biggest one. It's gonna be the light in my living room. It is one of the ones that I need to put new candlesticks on. These green kind of velvet ones are all worn out. Some of them don't have it on them. It's got like a few pieces of the, you know, 
dangles, but nothing really, which honestly for me is better. I was able to get a cheaper price on it and I also don't have to take as many off, but it's definitely the biggest and it's heavy. I can't really hold it. <laughs> I'm excited about it and I think it'll look great. And that's kind of all that's to be said. I think I got this one for 125. For a light that big, it's a pretty good price, honestly. If you look at, if you're getting new brass chandeliers, they're really, really expensive. I'm also keeping the candlesticks on. This is gonna be going up in my master bedroom. It also already has a ceiling medallion, which is so nice. A lot of them don't have that. I'm gonna have to get them. So I this one needs very little work. I really just need to take off all these little dangles and polish it up and then we'll be ready. So this one I think was, Hundred. Honestly, the pricing, nothing has labels on it. It's whatever they're feeling in the moment because I got so many lights, they did give me a good deal. This last light is going to be the one going in my guest room eventually. You can see some of the candlesticks are kind of, what do you call these? They're a little bit loose. I really just am gonna have to open it up and tighten them. That's not that big of a deal. I will be getting new little candlestick covers on here. This again has a ceiling medallion, so it's perfect. I don't even think I'll have to shorten the chain here. So this one, except for being cleaned and needing a little bit of tightening is almost ready to be installed as well. Last things I got were all in one area and it's really hardware. Doorknobs, hinges, uh, cabinet pulls, drawer pulls, lock boxes, all of that stuff. And I'm sure I'll be back shopping for more. I mean, I just said that I need to get more hinges for these doors. I did not get any hinges while I was there this last time. All right, we're on my little couch. <laughs> Similarly to how not all the doors are the same in this house, not all the doorknobs and faceplates are the same either. Downstairs, they tend to be the glass knobs with kind of a more floral and intricate faceplate that are a bit smaller. And upstairs, they tend to look a little bit more like this. So they're ovular, ov ovular, ovular, ovular with little like kind of dotted beads around it. This is not a one size fits all. There are some downstairs that look like this and there are some upstairs that don't look like this. Like with the doors, I could really hone in and try to find the exact same that I already have. From my perspective, it's not a worthwhile use of time because they're already mixed and matched a bit in this house. There is no harm in mixing and matching a little bit more, but I have one set that actually match what I have already perfectly. They don't have paint on them and they need to be like cleaned up a little bit, but they've got this really nice patina. This set was a little bit more expensive. I think it was 70, yeah, $75 for this, but this has what's called Japanesque, Japanese but you can see how the pattern kind of has striations in it, like it's almost a stripe. That is rare from what I could tell from looking online. I honestly just got them for the shape because they're the exact same shape as what I have here and what's already upstairs. All I need to do is get the little bits of paint that are on the edges off of here, but otherwise these are already in really good shape. And the last that I got is more like it fits the vibe, but not necessarily matches exact. That's these. You can see they have that ovular shape, but they have a little bit more detail where the other one just has the little beading along the edge. This one has the beading along the edge and then some intricacies up top. They're kind of like a mix between what I have upstairs and what I have downstairs. And to be honest, I would prefer that the entire house had these so they were all matching, but this will be nice, this will be pretty. I might put it on like the bathroom or maybe going up to the attic, like one of the doors that leads to something different. It definitely won't be one of the bedroom doors. You know what, I think going up to the attic will make a lot of sense. The doorknobs, I did go a little crazy. I feel like I just keep saying the same thing. Doorknobs are even more mixed up. Downstairs, like I said, it's all the leaded glass. I really like them. I'm planning on keeping that consistent down here, keeping the glass. Upstairs, some of the doorknobs upstairs are like that and some of them are metal. I don't really like the metal one. I really like these tortoiseshell and there are already a few in the house. I got a ton of tortoiseshell. Some of them have paint on them that I'm gonna strip off. Some of them, like this one, these ones are in pretty good shape. They all need to be cleaned up a bit. So I got four and a half of these really. One of the doors upstairs has a handle on one side and no handle on the other. So that's with this little guy. And the guy there actually gave it to me for free because most people aren't trying to find just one doorknob. They want the set like these are. The other thing I got, and this to be honest, might be like one of my favorite things. It was $60 and it's a little lock box. Uh, there, like I said, a few of my doors upstairs do not have kind of that clicking mechanism anymore. They're always, they just don't have this piece. 
which is kind of odd to me. I really love it. This actually has a, you can see that, don't look at my face, look at this. I will put a close up in. This actually has a tulip on the center. It's got kind of these little like imprints along this. It's really pretty. And if you remember, my front hall has stained glass windows that are two tulips. And so I just love trying to incorporate more like flowers and tulips throughout the house. So very excited about this. And I think I'm gonna need to get two or three more. I already know I'm gonna need to get at least one more for one of my doors. And then the last thing I wasn't even looking for, I was just going through all of the drawers that they had in there. I was just seeing if there were any, if there was any cabinet hardware or anything that, like is miscellaneous that I could use. And I found these two really cool cast iron hooks and I said in my house tour most people come in through my back door and I don't have anywhere like there's not a closet back there if they want to hang their coat up they have to go to the front hall and if they're all wet like if it's raining outside like it is today then they're gonna get water all through the kitchen so having hooks out back in my like basically mud room is perfect so that you can hang up your clothes you can take off your muddy shoes and the house stays clean and my little hooks look so pretty and that's all that I got Going through it, it's like, it's a lot, but it's also not a lot considering I am renovating this entire house. I know I'm gonna have to go back so many more times, but it was a good start. I got the doors, I got the light. My electrician is supposed to be coming back not next week, but the week after. And we're actually gonna be installing the overhead lighting upstairs, which I'm so excited about. So it's really good that I got those. I think depending on how the kitchen is delayed, like how soon I can get it back on track, will determine what stuff I kind of tackle before that. I do need to go through the whole house and restore all the hardware, get all the paint off of it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.